Hey guys, it's Dima from Demostech and today I have an update on the Broadlink and its two very strange apps. Before we begin I just want to remind you that soon there will be the first giveaway of Demostech so don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell to receive your future video updates so you won't miss the giveaway. Now let's begin. So the Broadlink, I've been using it for about I think a week, even more, and it works well. Well, it does work, not perfectly. What do I mean about that? So, first of all, as you can see, I have two apps. As I told you before, if you want to control it with your Google Assistant, you'll need to use the IHC, and if you don't, you will be good enough with the e-control. Both of them have advantages and disadvantages. So, because I don't really use the e-control, let's go there and check it first. So, as you can see, basically I use only three devices till now. All of them are in the living room, nothing is in a different room. So, I have my uh, Tornado air conditioner, the hot TV set boxer, however you want to call it, and the Sony TV. Now, the remotes here, you can kinda customize them. I still haven't fully found how, but you can, I mean, so let's go for example for Sony TV. Oh, because the device is offline, you cannot actually use the remotes. Okay, give me a second. So basically I just moved the Broadlink to a place nearby a USB, connected it, let it boot up, and now if we'll go for example to the Sony TV. So this is the Sony TV remote. It's pretty much default. All the default remotes come like that. You have your channels, etc. And pretty much it's very basic. You cannot move here the icons or do any cool stuff like, I don't know, add a specific icon or something, but it works. If we'll go back, for example, go to hot. The hot is pretty much the same channel. And actually I think the volume here, I set it to control the Sony TV volume. So that's kind of cool. You can actually set one remote to do particular stuff from other devices as well. That's very useful. And the Tornado air conditioner is totally different. It's not exactly a remote, you just have your off key here. There is no normal on. You have your cooling, you have your heat that you can configure here. You can add things here. You have your, well, basically whatever you set. So I, for example, use Auto Economy 25, for example. This is totally automatic on the air conditioner. Cooling of 23 degrees. Cooling with 23 uh, degrees with turbo. So in case I'm coming home now and I want it to cool fast, that's a good idea. And for heat, I just set it for something random because I didn't have to use it yet. So I'm not really sure what I'll use for heat. Anyway, there is something called create shortcut here, which doesn't work and I have no idea how to use it. There's another thing called timer, which I never used, but basically it's a timer task. You can um, choose tasks, when to do them, etc. Kind of cool, but I'm not really sure that I'll use it ever. You can also add scenes, and this is where specifically the e-control is better, in my opinion. So if we'll go to scene, basically what a scene does, you can choose something particular with one button to do many stuff, for example, I'm coming home. You can create a scene that is called I'm coming home, for example, which will turn on the TV, turn on the set box to a specific channel, for example, and turn on your air conditioner to something that you prefer. Let's see what we have here. So we can, for example, choose, let's say, for some reason there are two Sony TVs here, I have no idea. For example, we can choose here, let's say, mute. I don't know for no reason, just let's call it M for now. And then we can do, you know, let's not do anything. Yeah, we have to. Okay, so let's go to Sony TV again and unmute. So, I don't know, something random, doesn't matter. Now, you see here, there's like a time duration. So you can use that. That's pretty much the same as the IHC. Now, where that stands, is that, you know what, let's save that for a moment. Oh, here it is! Finally I found it! So I think you press the add scene long and then you have those. So you can edit, you can do a timer, you can copy it, you can do auto home, auto away. So let's say auto home, let's see, I never actually tried that. 
Okay, this scene will be activated when you are approaching home. This function may not work properly, sometimes due to the phone OS, network, GPS, blah blah blah. Let's try that. Oh, so basically you just set it and that's it. I'm not really sure how that works, but yeah, that's kind of cool. Now, remember that if you use this thing, your app will have to work in the background. So this might eat your battery. So don't overuse it. Now, there's only one, I would say, disadvantage in the e-control and that's the only reason pretty much that I prefer the IHC and I'll probably actually remove the e-control. And this is the Google Home. You cannot control the e-control with your Google Assistant. You have to use the IHC. Let's go to IHC, which is pretty similar actually. So you have your sort of as a standalone device or remote or however you want to call it your RM Pro actually. Again you have your air conditioner, your TV and your set top box pretty much the same. I didn't do any other cool stuff. Now uh, as you can see I created a few scenes and actually if we'll go to for example to AC off scene you'll see that the only thing it does it's actually tuning off air conditioner and I'll tell you why in a moment. Let's go back to home, let's go for example to the you know, let's begin with a TV. If you'll press one, it will actually show you quick buttons that you can do. It's very cool, it's very useful. I mean, all your pretty much most needed buttons are here. You can press more and you have basically your full remote control, which again, you, I think you cannot actually move around the icons again, but you can learn, you can use timer, you can use settings, let's go to settings one moment. Uh, no, it will just set you how you want to call it and stuff like that. It works well. Again, the simple stuff, the most useful buttons are here. You can press more. And it's actually a pretty neat remote control for your air conditioner. It actually has most of the buttons that my uh, remote of air conditioner has. There is no turbo button, but I think I know how to turn turbo. I think it's by wind or something like that. There's something called healthy sleep. I'm not really sure how it works. Let's, you know, let's enable it. Oh, so yeah, but the thing is that this thing doesn't have any sort of way to know what's the temperature. So this kind of thing stupid. Anyway, let's cancel that. So yeah, you can pretty much control it. Now currently I cannot control it because actually the broadlink is connected in this room and that's why it doesn't matter what we press. So all of that is pretty cool, regular, nothing special. Again, same thing here. Uh, you have your devices, you have your scenes. Actually here, it will be a lot easier to find your remote control, your correct remote control. Let's, you know what, let me try to show you if you will add an appliance here. Let's say air conditioner. So basically you have a cloud match. You have your air conditioner by brand, if you know the brand and you have a self-learning. So the self-learning is pretty much the same as e-control, nothing too special. If you know the brand, so basically you have multiple brands. My brand for some reason wasn't here. I have no idea why. And you cannot actually add here, which is really stupid, but whatever. The TV actually I did find, but I created the remote by learning. So basically cloud learning is basically you match one key and then it will recognize the code and give you a suitable remote. So that's actually working very well. Now, finally, let's go to our Google Home. So basically you go to your Home Assistant app and now what you're going to do is go here, go to Home Control and currently, as you can see under Devices, I have AC Cool, AC Off, air conditioner and TV switch. And except the air conditioner itself, if you remember, those are the scenes that I created. And here's the sort of caveat of this whole thing that Brolin made a connection with Google Home. You can control only the air conditioner for some reason, or probably only the self-learned. I'm not really sure how that works, but you can create scenes and actually tell Google, for example, well, you know what, let's just try that. Hey Google, initiate AC cool. Okay, activating the AC cool. And it will do that, which is really cool. Same for, hey Google, 
AC off. Sure, turning off the air conditioner. And as you can see, it even recognizes that it is an air conditioner. So that's kind of cool. You can still use that. So basically, Google turn on the air conditioner, turn off air conditioner and our stuff, it works. And same for TV switch, basically what I did is just, is just created a scene that will turn off or on the TV. It's very simple and useful for me. You can uh, actually configure scenes for specific channels, for example, and many other things actually. So that's kind of cool. Another thing, if you decided that you want to rename a scene, you can actually enter one of them and give it a nickname. I'm not going to do that, but you, basically you can do that as well. It's very cool. Now, there's one, small thing that works really 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 stupid and bad and i think the reason isn't actually broadlink but google home assistant and this is for example if i'll tell google hey google lower the temperature by one degree sure cooling the air conditioner down actually no what it will do for example if you had 22 degrees it will actually turn into 23. I have no idea why I tried a different remote, I tried to reconnect it, nothing worked. Now, since the connection is very easy, let me show you how you connect it. So you know what, let me disconnect my Broadlink smart home. Unlink account, unlink, yeah I know, I have nothing very special here so I don't really care. So basically the first time that you actually uh, go to your home control, you won't have those Broadlink for some reason, it still shows here. Let's refresh it, okay. That's what we will see. You can press the plus and you'll see all the smart home appliances that you can use. Scroll down or search your Broadlink, here it is. It's very simple, you should read it. Basically you need to set everything first with your Broadlink and the IHC app. It actually tells you that you have to use the IHC app. Press here that you confirm that. Next. Then you just need to log in with your credentials of a Broadlink account. And after that, it will link the account. And in a moment, pretty much, you'll be able to actually choose which room everything is. So let me just choose that all of them are in my living room, because they are. Hit done, assign in four devices again. Uh, it pretty much tells you what you can actually say and you can say lots of other stuff as well, as you've seen. And that's it, we're back to business. That's how you connect the Broadlink to your Google Home Assistant. So remember guys, if you want to connect your Google Home Assistant, you should use the IHC app, not the control. If you actually want to use Galfans, for example, so you should use the e-control app. For me, I prefer the Google Home Assistant. So I'm going to actually uninstall the e-control and use only the IHC. It's your decision, sadly it's not perfect, but at least now I can control everything with the Google Home Assistant or through the phone, through the app, and it's pretty convenient and pretty cheap to actually buy and create that sort of smart home appliance or whatever you want to call it. Thank you for watching this Demostech episode. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button and hit the bell so you won't miss any future video. And I'll see you on the next one.